Hello and welcome to the latest IronQuest feedback call. Uh, for those that have joined us before, you know the drill. Uh, for those of you that are new, um, I'll just give you a quick intro to what IronQuest is all about. Um, so IronQuest is a project I founded back in 2019 and the IronQuest project is based on the format of the IronViz feeders. So that being that every month we select a different topic to visualize and visualizations entered for this project um, should focus on three key areas, that's design, storytelling and analysis. And just like with the Iron Biz feeders, um, Iron Quest participants are expected to source their own data um, and take the topic and kind of really make it their own um, for each month. So every month we have a different selected topic. This month in February 2021, our topic was history. So, and I was really lucky to collaborate with the Viz to Educate project this month. I'll tell you more about that shortly. Um, but with the topic of history, we asked people to go away and visualize anything about history that they, that they wanted. So perhaps it was a particular area of history that in interested them, or maybe it was um, ancient history or recent history. It really didn't matter. It was just, some, just as long as people went away and, and visualized the topic related to history somehow. And we are really lucky we received over 40 entries for this round um, and we're going to review many of those visits today where people have requested feedback. So this call is specifically for people that when they submitted their viz, they, they could tick that yes, I would like feedback um, box. Um, the feedback we're going to provide today is in two forms. So some people will have requested just general feedback, so how they could improve their overall visualization. Um, whereas other people may have requested IronViz style feedback. So when we talk about IronViz style feedback, that's talking around the IronViz criteria um, or the scoring criteria, which is design, storytelling and analysis. So it's looking at those three key areas and, and determining what people could do to kind of strengthen their visualization in those areas. Um, quite often what we see with IronQuest entries, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, is that perhaps some people have done um, maybe a singular chart viz or, or something that's perhaps not what you'd expect to see entered for iron viz um, that may need some more kind of analytical elements um, in the visualization. But we'll get more into that when we start reviewing the visits. Okay, so this month is actually a collaboration with viz to educate and I've had the pleasure of being joined by Eve Thomas and Vinod Kumar. Hi, Eve and Vinod. Hey. Hey, Sarah. Thank you for joining me today. Um, it's a pleasure to be collaborating with you on, on the Visitor Educate project. Um, Eve, do you want to give a quick introduction to yourself for those that don't know you? Yep, so I'm Eve. Um, you've hopefully seen me on Twitter, but if not, um, I work for the Information Lab. I'm a data visualization consultant and I'm co lead of Visitor Educate along with Vinod and also diversity in data. So hopefully you've heard of both of those. Um, I am also a Tableau public featured author um, and I'm a five times visit of the day winner. So yeah, that's pretty much me. Thank you. And Vinod? Hey, hello everyone, I'm Vinod. So you probably can't miss me on uh, Twitter. So every day you can see something or other from me. And uh, I'm a Tableau ambassador and I co-lead few uh, community initiatives like uh, Vista Educate, SDG Viz Project, and uh, I'm also part of the leadership team of Mentoring Meetup and uh, Viz Connect. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to for this uh, partnership with uh, IronQuest. And yeah. Yeah, no, you both, you're both involved in so many projects, it's hard to keep track of everything. But yeah, okay, so without further ado, let's um, start reviewing the visits. So we're going to work in alphabetical order. Um, so the first viz we have to look at today is by AD, and this one is all about Serena Williams. So here she's got, it's all about Serena Williams' career, because the number of like, Grand Slam titles she's got. Um, and then we go down and look at like, when they happened what, I mean there's so many <laughs> she's won so many things um and it's, it's just crazy how long she's she's, she's been, been around for really um and then we have this uh, radial um chart here which is kind of like her career um in like a circular motion uh and her win rate as well versus other players 
I mean, I, th I really like the story this is telling. It's a really consistent design with the colours um, for the different um, competitions. Does anyone else have any feedback to add? I love that central chart. I really like that radio. I think that's really effective. Um, and yeah, you're right. The colours are really consistent throughout and it's like a very clear narrative, I feel. Like it's a really logical order. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this as I particularly love that centre chart. Yeah, it's nice. And I, I like how it's <laughs> documentary as well. Um, you know, cause sometimes these kind of charts can be quite difficult to understand. But I think with the commentary and the clear tooltips and everything, it makes it much easier to read. Yeah, even the little sort of dashed lines that she's used as well. This looks really hard. It just looks really kind of clean. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Attractive. I really, really like it. Really cool. Just the little line lengths, you know, how to, the how to read section. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I really love that as well. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, and she's got a read from midday to midnight um, in the clockwise position because sometimes it can be really difficult to know where these kind of charts start and end. Um, I've seen some people like start them at about like quarter past the hour and all different things. Um, so I like this tells you where to begin and how to read it. I'm just looking at the uh, the win rate. Yeah, it's nice to have the comparison with the other um, professionals as well. I quite like that. I kind of like just give it a bit of context, you know, like, I think that's really effective as well. Yeah, it's funny because it includes <laughs> Venus as well. <laughs> Yeah, I really like it. And I think it could be quite easy when you're doing a biz like this to go a bit overboard with pictures and things that aren't necessarily necessary. So I like how she's kept the, the images in there, but they're like really minimal and they don't distract from the visualizations. Yeah, it's like the charts, the charts take kind of center stage. I, I, I prefer that when it comes to visualizations. Yeah, and the bands are really nice just to summarize everything as well. I mean, those, I mean the number of things that she's won is just insane. Um, it really puts it into perspective. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. Well done, AD. Okay, so the next one is by uh, Alexis, and this is called 3.11. And this visualization is all about the tsunami in Japan in 2011. And what I thought was really cool about this video, I'll just let it load up, um, was that it's actually in Japanese and in English. Um, and I think it's probably the first fears I've seen that's actually been translated into both languages at the same time. I don't know about you, but it's not something we come across very often. Um, so it tells the story of the earthquake and the tsunami, which I remember very vividly. I don't know about you. Obviously, I watched a documentary about it recently and it's really devastating. But um, yes, it tells a story about the earthquake um, where it was felt um, and then moves on to, you can actually like um, change this map. So you could change the epicenter to somewhere that you're familiar with. So you could change this to London, let's say, and you can really get a sense of the extent um, of the earthquake and how far away it was felt. So I think I clicked on this before and I think once you select London, it would have been, if it was in London, it would have been felt as far away as Rome and Madrid. And I think that just really puts it into perspective how significant it was. Um, it's, it's a very good use of the buffer calculations as well. So to denote uh, yeah, the distance. Yeah, definitely. And then we can see the tsunami itself. I would say the, the only thing it's missing here is on, I think this is a timeline and obviously it's only in Japanese. So I don't know what it says, um, but I think it's, I assume it's a timeline. Um, and this 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 viz is interesting because initially I just thought it was um, like a, a bar chart, but it's actually showing the the, the the height of the bars represents the height of the tsunami um, water, and then the authors included like a little picture of a person and then um, this structure to actually show in comparison to how how high the water was, and I mean it's just insane. That's a really cool visual, isn't it? Yeah. It really does. It really does. Great way to compare to show the magnitude of the impact. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think I, I think again the only critique I give, as you said, is that it'd be good to have it in English as well, because I don't really want to know what that. <laughs> um, I have to ask him. Yeah, but really, really cool. I, I really, I think it's a really nice use of maps as well. There's a lot of really cool maps in this that um, 
I just, I, I really like a good map. It's, it's so visual, isn't it? And interactive. And it's just, it's a really um, nice addition, I think, on the biz. So, um, yeah, I guess my, my only criticism is if we keep going down, we start talking about um, the, I think this is the death toll. I think I've passed yeah. it, this one here. And I think, I mean, it's, 25,000 people died it's obviously a huge number but I think it's kind of that detail is kind of lost in this chart and then in this text I would like to see something to kind of put that into perspective so you can actually feel that there's people behind the numbers um because I, I I just felt that was lost um in the way it's presented currently yeah it's a massive number isn't it yeah yeah. sort of had a ban or just something that would really highlight that because that's if you're skimming over it it's kind of easy to miss like yeah and then these um kind of circles on the map here they kind of they're broken down into um like fatalities missing injured um and I, I think that they're so small that you you just kind of lose that sense of the actual people yeah but yeah, I like I I really like the, the the consistent kind of storytelling design of this. Yeah, I think it's like in quite a logical order, which I like. So it's like yeah. yeah. He, he, <laughs> and then the focus starts off with the Fukushima incident, and uh, around that he has given all the information, the pretext of it and everything. So how how often it occurs? Fukushima is a tragedy, you know, like it's so mm. sad. Yeah. Like yeah. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next one. These are all general feedback for now. Um, this one is by Alice, and it's looking at um, Black American representation in Congress. I think was this oh, yeah. for diversity and data, Eve? It might have yeah, been. Like, um, well, it wasn't our data, but yeah, she. Um, okay. I would say, Eve, uh, sorry, Alice is just doing so much good work at the moment. She seems to be everywhere. Yeah. I was really impressed with this, actually. It was a bit of the day as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was, yeah. When, it's, when this came up, I was pretty convinced that it was going to make it. Yeah. Was, it's really clever the way that she's laid this out. Um, really, like, really easy to interpret, you know? Like, so it was really clever the way that she... Um, she um, went about this one yeah i like the use of icons and uh, really yeah. clear design as well really cool. yeah i love the big bands as well like she's really utilized that space yeah left hand side like she's utilized it really well yeah yeah really, really you can cool. um i'm just looking at the tooltips so she's actually got the pictures in the tooltips which is really cool as well it's really, really well executed. Yeah, and that's that's not that's easily done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's really hard. I know that I've tried it. <laughs> I've done it myself. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, no. Um, I don't too many. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So you go ahead. No, no, no. I mean, there's this one independent party. So that's been put into perspective. So you can, when you look at the whole picture, you can immediately sort of find out that one independent party person, Victor O. Fraser. Yeah. So that could be a uh, very important event. Yeah, no, it really stands out. Yeah, no, I, I, I personally wouldn't change anything about this. I think it's super clear. Um, it's been introduced well and, yeah, easy to read. I like that you so can much effort it. has gone behind putting in all the pictures. I know, yeah. I did that for one bit and I, I'm not in a hurry to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I highlight the space is really cool as well. I just yeah, which is great. I mean, obviously, you, the first thing you're going to want to do if you're in American, I'm sure, is put yeah. in your state. <laughs> um, so yeah, I no, appreciate that. Yeah. Okay. Great job, Alice. Um, Brilliant. So the next one is by Lisa, and this is looking at the history of typography. Sorry, self by Alexa. Um, so yeah, the history of typography. So looking at how that's changed over time. We have a timeline here, which actually includes a typography, which is pretty cool in the in the tooltip. Examples of each. 
really cool that that's actually not arid as well on Tableau Republic. <laughs> it must be images. They have to be. <laughs> it must be, yeah. There's no <laughs> way. <laughs> I was just like, oh, that's cool typography. I really want to use that on one of my visits. Um, <laughs> really cool. I like the, uh, the the way that, that she's done the kind of the highlighting behind the, the text as well. Yeah, that's a really cool design. I remember this came up and I remember thinking, oh, I can't wait to dive into this. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, I mean, this is something new I haven't seen before. Probably it could be there, but this is the first time I'm seeing something like this on typography, fonts, history of the fonts and all, yeah. Yeah, I just bought a book actually all about... Um, typography um and it was she this viz was published around the same time that the book i received the book so i was like oh this is good timing um but yeah it's the first viz i've ever seen on this topic i think um, yeah and well, it's, it's a slick design isn't it it's, it's nice. yeah it's really nice just like simple like black and white colors i love the little um fountain pen icons as well um i guess if i was going to give any feedback um, more constructive I'd say maybe there's a lot of text at the, I mean it's about typography but there is a lot of text at the, <laughs> the bottom of this biz I mean there's and there's not a great deal of analysis so we have the timeline um, but beyond that well, there's no chart or anything so might if there was if the data was available it'd be interesting to see maybe how the use of um, typography has changed over time or like the, the many trends and things like that um, and maybe think about a, a different way of displaying all of this information at the bottom as well. Yeah, I, I think like, I think the text, like obviously like when you read it, like there's a lot of like, um, you know, it's, it's interesting to read. Like there's a lot of like, it's very like, um, it's obviously like, you know, connected. I wonder whether if you made it a bit smaller and just added a bit more space around each one, mm. you know, like, that would just make a big difference on this one. Like just a bit of spacing. Like, yeah. So texty, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's really interesting, like what's written. So I think it'd be a shame to take it off completely. Yeah, no, I wouldn't want to take it off. Maybe just if we could see some examples of script and yeah. decorative, and maybe have it in the, the hidden behind that in a hover over or something. Um, that was what I was thinking. But or examples of these, because I don't, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know what these, um, what these fonts yeah, look I think, like. I think I can, I can probably picture Ariel and Baskerville, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. But no, great, great job. Really cool bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the next one is by Alicia, and this one is on the Black Death. I love how we've got a real variety of history, like yeah. all yeah. kinds of different things. I was so happy when this visit came up. <laughs> um, really, really cool visit. So it's, some, it's just something that, you know, in the UK, you all know this, it's just something that we do cover. Um, it, most had, it was such a massive event, wasn't it, across Europe? It just changed the face of Europe. So it's a really, really interesting topic. If you don't know about it or you don't learn about it at school, this, this is definitely worth diving into because there's a lot of information packed into this. Yeah, this, this, this will, I mean, like, even uh, in the subcontinent, people uh, read about it in history. So this is a very important event. And I, I think that she has put in a lot of information in there. And uh, it's, it's quite informative. Yeah. It's um, it was a black death where they kind of put crosses outside people's houses, right? Yeah. Um, mm. I was I was thinking about that the other day because I mean there's similarities between that and <laughs> coronavirus, right? Um, and that recently <laughs> where I live, they they were doing a there was a surge testing because they found uh, one of the South African strains in my little village, um, and I was joking saying it was like the, the plague, and they were kind of like marking houses. Obviously they weren't, but that's how it felt. I mean, I've heard people saying now that um, the Black Death is the second most famous pandemic in history. <laughs> so it is very relevant to today, isn't it? Now, like, I think mm. it's really interesting to see that, you know, how they handled it, like, all those hundreds of years ago. So, yeah, it's interesting to see the cures as well, like, um, cho chopping up a like snake. <laughs> yeah, oh. the, whipping, the whipping is um, an interesting one. I think that... Um, it's a really, there's really good storytelling in this viz. You know what I mean? Like it's really logical the way it's set out. Mm. I love the, um, the little he the headings, like it really guides the user like through the story. Yeah. There's so much important info packed into here as well. And it's just such an interesting read. So I really appreciate the annotations yeah. on the chart as well. So yeah. It's always good to help tell the story because you see that massive drop. And I think without that, you wouldn't understand kind of quite yeah. what happened. 
yeah, really, really, really great example of an educational like you know what this could easily be used in a school. You know, this is such a good resource for um, young people as well. So it's it's a great resource, yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. So, yeah. Reminds me a little bit of a fact sheet you might do at school. Uh, my daughter does lots of those where they kind of put all this kind of information on a single page. Um, and, you know, this is all compact in there, like everything you need to know really about the main kind of story of the Black, the black Death. Yeah, and really nice imagery as well. Like she's used imagery, but she's, I think she's just got just the right amount. Yeah, and they're presented really nicely and they all, they all kind of work well together. Yeah, it has blended. It has blended well. I mean, using images, it's always a challenge to get the right uh, color combination onto your business background. But this one, this one has blended well. Yeah, I think even though we don't tend to nothing, use, like, nothing looks out of place. Like, because this is for young people, I think the images do kind of really help with like you know kids learning as well. You know, it's mm. Yeah, exactly. imagery there like if it's just all text it's quite hard for them to kind of like take in a lot of info i think but with a good balance this is a really good example of that yeah i yeah. agree i like the interactivity as well like it it's, works well no excellent job really reminds me a lot of it it reminds me a lot of what you'd expect to see in iron viz as well like this long form storytelling um kind of style Okay, so the next one is by uh, Aman, and this one, uh, Aman's asked for Iron Viz style feedback, so bear that in mind. And this one is about the Great Depression. It's another big historical event. So I studied yep. this at A level. I think I did as well. Going back quite a bit now. <laughs> it's one of the dates that I actually remember in history, like, yeah. for some reason. This is good. I mean, the background and uh, more like a newsletter. So this one, this one. Mm -hmm. looks... I like the simple use of color as well, like the red and black. Yeah. It does look like a newspaper actually. It's really clever. Yeah, really cool charts. So very clear sort of, again, storytelling throughout. You know, clear titles, like an obvious kind of like logical order. Mm -hmm. I like the way he's used colour to highlight so we can see that the, 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 the tallest bars um, in each chart and some annotations as well. Just, just curious why the complete date has been mentioned on the chart above. Is there any significance with that 1929? That's when, that's when it happened. That was the, the 1929 was the year of the um, Great Depression. Wall Street, Wall Street, no, no. Uh, the, the Wall Street the crash. One chart above, uh, you can, can you scroll up a bit? The stock market crash? Yeah, yeah. 9, 9, 9, 19, 9, 29. Oh. Okay, that, that month. Okay, got it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was the official market peak before the fall. No, it's, it's, it happened over two months, is it? I mean, ninth month and tenth month. So, yes. Oh, yeah. The exact... Yes, I think he's highlighted that period and those called out the beginning and the end. I think start, things started to improve after Black Tuesday. For me, I think the date's just a bit confusing because they're the wrong way around for me. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, cause, I mean, since this is all 1929, you could get away with just showing kind of the just the, the September voice. Yeah, 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 the month and the day. It's just two months, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Don't need the year. But yeah, I mean, a very small. The access has, uh, I mean, the state format would be avoided on the access. Yeah, I'd make it clear as well that this is dollars, right? And and I'm assuming that's that it's, it's not it's not hundreds, right? It's indices. That, that. It's indices, I guess. Uh, yes, it's not clear. I would make just call it out exactly what that's showing. Um, and then I think down on the um, the final chart as well. I'm I'm not quite sure why. I think it's he's using a um, a continu continuous versus discrete issue with the dates getting rotated. So I'll just um, fix that so that we can see the dates uh, displayed horizontally as opposed to vertically, like the others. Yeah. 
I might even consider changing that to a line chart because we're looking at dates. Um, I might. I, I do quite like the fact that that bar is sort of so far highlighted in red. I know it's really stark. Yeah. But I guess there's things you could do on the line though, right? You could maybe have a point on that line. Um, to, yeah. To obvious or a band. Well, you could make the, the, you could do like almost like a dual axis, make those bars really thin, but have like, you know, the line in red, but have the sort of line chart over the top. You can do some really cool things with that chart, actually. Yeah. I think it's still really effective the way that that bar has been highlighted. Like, I like yeah. the use of that this. Yeah, totally. Okay, um, moving on to the next one. This one is I love this variation, don't you? Like, it's brilliant. I know. This one is by uh, Betshaw, um, and it's looking at um, Mary Jane Patterson, which is just general feedback. Is anyone aware of who Mary Jane Patterson was or is uh, before we continue? I wasn't, by the way. No. Yeah, I wasn't before. No. So she was one of the um, only black women and the first ever who earned a full degree. I can't remember this one was tagged for diversity in data. I can't remember, but it's a really cool one for diversity and data as well. Yeah, totally. I love the visits that really shine a light on someone I've not heard of before um, and like tell their story. It's really interesting. Um, so the dots up here represent the estimated number of women who earned a Bachelor of Arts in 1862. Just to show the context, that's nice. So. It's just like it's just um, for, it's just a visual, isn't it? Just yeah, to, just to yeah, show like how. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it would be good. Yeah, it, it was okay. So there was estimated a, a thousand women. Um, yeah. So there's I imagine there's a thousand dots just randomly distributed. So then we have a timeline. I like a good timeline. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> It's really nice. It's a nice timeline, actually. I've not seen one quite like this before. It's really clean, isn't it? Yeah. I, really like, this. Mm. I like the quotes as well. It's nicely laid out. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of colour, but it's not too much. Like, so like you've got that pink, you've got sort of a bit of yellow there, and I love that turquoise. It's like nice contrast. Mm. It's interesting to see that the other famous people that graduated from the same um, high school as her as well. Like lots of oh, black firsts. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I didn't notice that before. Actually, that's really nice interesting. First black major. It's a really, it's an interesting history. I then. think this, this, this timeline serves the purpose. They set out to show like how how it has happened, and uh, I think this is perfect. And it ends with okay. that last quote is really, really like it kind of really drills at home, don't you think? Yeah, I like this show, this this kind of stark distance, right? So she, Mary Jane Patterson died in 1894. And then it wasn't then until 30 years later that um, another, a woman received a PhD, a black woman received a PhD in the US. It's a really good use of white space, actually, in this one. I think that's, that's often something that people don't consider in design. Like yeah of white space whereas this one really does use it incredibly well i think sometimes people are afraid to use it i feel yeah. that they feel the need to kind of fill the space yeah. which i think is very easily done um i, I like I, <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh the, the way that they've done this kind of approach with the dots because i think it's if you compare this one to the one at the top you can see how few women actually um studied a phd in, in 1919 21 sorry oh yeah it's diversity in data i can see the hashtag at the bottom oh, there you go, yeah, there you go. It's, it's, yeah we haven't shared this on our on our um, twitter page i'm definitely sure we should wear it i guess if i was going to change one thing i'd probably um look to try and make sure i'm using the same font 
um, throughout. So we've got different font sizes, different styles as well. Um, just for consistency, I might just keep these in a similar like grain. Yeah, I like that font on the turquoise text. I might know what that font is. I quite like that. Yeah, it's nice. Really cool biz overall, though. But yeah, no, really good. And I, I like the consistent use of um, the colours as well. Yeah. And again, the images, they're, they're not overpowering and they work really well. Yeah. Okay, so next up we have a viz by Christos, and this is a galaxy of notable black achievements, which is put together as part of Black History Month, which obviously happened in February. So we have a, a galaxy of um, and the stars are coloured by gender, and if we hover over, we can see um, the different like achievements of different black uh, people in history. So yeah, so I think it's it's great. I think it's a really nice um, way of showing like all the different achievements in the like the starry sky. Um, I would say that the way that they're laid out currently is very random. So there's no way of seeing like the earliest to the latest. There is a t there is a um, slider though, so we can okay cool. reduce the number shown so we can see different time periods. Um, bottom top actually looking at that. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, you're right. It's because it, start, yeah, they start going up to the top. Um, I like how that we can see the different genders, which is great. Um, we could have like a little, like maybe like, I don't know, kind of like a little kind of, like a how to read or something to sort of indicate that it is going from like, like from top to bottom. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it does say hover over the stars or left click on the skyline to zoom by category. Left click on the skyline. Uh, left clicking on this doesn't work for me, but anyway. Um, it's going to be at the bottom bit, won't it? Like just slightly, you know, that sort of like mountain. Yeah, that bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you click on one of those, it looks like you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> I would have missed that. I just thought that was part of the design. Yeah. Yeah, like a, like a mountain. Yeah, yeah it'd be good to have maybe, maybe that make that a tiny bit more obvious. Yeah, because you can't see those categories until you hover, right? Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know how I'd go about doing that, but yeah, making that a tiny bit more obvious would be, would be good. Yeah. Um, and, and Christos did ask for Ironviz style feedback. So I would say if this was to be entered for Ironviz, it would definitely need a bit more analysis. So we could, it's, it's great mm. what we're seeing here now, um, but we're not, there's not really kind of like a, so much of a story behind it we're not it's just kind of presented as it is right um so yeah. it'd be good to see maybe the a chart showing that like, the achievements over time like how the number of people um achieving things over time is increasing or maybe the difference in changes in gender maybe um yeah be like the main insight I'd say, into this yeah thing. or different categories maybe there's emerging categories in here um which is obviously quite hard to see in the way that it's presented currently yeah, like a bit more analysis. Like, yeah, just drawing that story out. Yeah, I, I'd say maybe storytelling as well. Like, if you're going to have that level of analysis, though, I expect the storytelling will kind of naturally follow in a way. Um, yeah. yeah. If you know so what you, I mean. You could start with something like this to, as, to present it, then maybe have more below the kind of yeah, story, story behind it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yes, I do like the skyline. I think that's really cool. High blend. Yeah, no, it's cool. And I, I would have completed that, so thank you. All right, yeah. the next one is by Dan, and this is looking at the Jewish population of the world. Through the ages. So, um, I don't remember seeing this one. I think I must have missed this one on my radar. It's, I always miss them. It's so hard to keep up um, with them. So, yeah. so we have a timeline um, going from... Um, top to bottom so the most recent dates at the bottom and I'm just figuring out how to read it so just bear with me okay so this this chart is looking at the the number of Jews 
uh, the middle part is massacres and then the right part is population by region regions split into um israel middle east and asia okay, europe north it's america it's and Asia. Right? it's like europe it's like israel compared to like major continents is it yeah so the right. first one's israel then we've got <laughs> middle east and asia europe the Jewish yeah yeah okay yeah Oh, yeah, North America. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you can really see that 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 rise in um, in Europe, and then yeah, more mm. Europe. all quite recent, well, in terms of history. Looking <laughs> at this timeline, yeah, history. that's yeah, really it's, interesting. Seeing that change, yeah, because there's not a lot going on up here, right? You have got a few no, that obviously dominated by Israel to begin with, but then. And you, I guess, unsurprisingly, around the times yeah. of massacres, that sh there's a shift in, yeah, and sort of like a shift in sort of like where people live. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, it, it looks like. I mean, looking at this from someone who's not that aware of some of these events, like it looks like um, Jewish people were sort of driven away from certain areas in terms of where those massacres were occurring. Is what I take from this. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I always expected to see more of a shift um, during the Second World War. But I can't see a huge shift there. Well, I guess... Um, I guess from there, actually, that's a little bit less, isn't it? The numbers in Europe yeah, massively drop are, off. Yeah. yeah. Which is not really it's surprising. Increasing. Ah, North America. Interesting. And Israel. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, so the, the, state, the state of Israel... And the, the increase in the population there since the, well, pretty much since the Second World War. I'd almost be tempted on this, like, you know, you've got, like, the larger massacres, like, the significant, really significant points in history to sort of have, like, a, almost like a reference band going across, I don't know if that'd be possible. So, that like, you know, you can see it really match up, because I, I, I kind of slightly missed that there, because I was having to look across. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, so you can sort of follow it more easily along. That'd be quite cool. And my other one critique on this would be that you've got red and green next to each other there on that chart. So yeah. In terms of like, this colour blind, they wouldn't be able to necessarily easily see between those two colours. And we've got colours representing different things as well. So red is massacres, but red is also uh, Europe, right? And yeah. Blue over here too. Yeah, so maybe like a little kind of remix of colours maybe. Um, but a really interesting this, really interesting to match yeah. with yeah, it's a very, very important. The, the story they have uh, set out to convey is it's a very strong story. And yeah, some it's, I'm, 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 I'm not able to relate a bit between these three vertical uh, sections. So that's uh, the readability and the scrolling. So that, that becomes a bit. Yeah, because I guess the timeline's so long, you have to scroll. Yeah, you can't see everything in one go. But it is a quite a unique way of showing the information. I I don't remember seeing a viz like this before. And I, yeah, I think the scroll in this case it's not. Um, I think it makes sense in the in the, it, it makes sense in that you know you, it's a logical way to view the viz to scroll it from the top, from the top to the bottom. You're going from far back in history to modern day. So it kind of forces the user to, to, to view it, the data in a certain order and to like see that story unfolding. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For me, yeah. This, the scrolling of this does make sense in that way. I think it actually is, helps with this, the telling of the story. Yeah, I do it's appreciate it. Yeah, it's a very good use of real estate, I would say. I mean, uh, just like our cross tabs, you have the rows and against the rows, you can see all the information for the different columns. So it's more like designed like a cross tab. Yeah. One, one good thing is that they've got the labels of the, of the regions. Um, they, they only, they're called out when they, when they kind of that, that region almost emerges. So down at the bottom, you've got the emergence of like North America and the Southern hemisphere. Um, you don't need to scroll back up to the top to remind yourself what those regions are. And obviously it's Israel as well. 
Can you click on the countries to the um, right hand side there? Is that why they're in blue? Can you see that on that chart underneath the map? The, Different populations. Yeah, they this, well, this is um, this is Wikipedia, right? Oh, right. Cool. Okay, didn't realize that. I didn't see that at the top. Yeah. Cool. So you can actually you can dive in and learn more about it if you want to as well. Yeah. Okay, so the, I'm just looking at the inspiration. So there's actually a chart here in the book at the top, which is, it was, it was the inspiration for this visit. So it's the same kind of principle. We've got the, like the stack bars and the timeline. Uh, yeah. Not the stack bars. This is a very informative visit. I mean, it has a lot of information packed and it shows the whole story for almost 2,000 years. Mm. Yes. It's definitely be useful for schools as well because I know I did a lot of studies on Judaism in RE yeah. at school. But particularly like during the last century. Holocaust, Holocaust. Yeah, but even even more than that, like the like the the origins of the religion and that kind of thing. So Yeah, I suppose this one you could use for sort of not just history, but probably like religious studies as well at like RE. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it can be one used across different um Top subjects as well. Yeah, cool. no, it's good. It's good. Um, definitely a, a unique one as well. I've not seen anything else yeah. like this. Okay, so the next one is by Fred, and this is looking at the history of the Nobel Prize, which Eve, you know all about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you when I saw this. When I did, I focused on kind of gender and ethnicity, whereas this one kind of focuses on everything else. You know, which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of the story of it, and I really enjoyed it. I love it. I saw this, there's like so much information in it. I mean, like, it's like a nine is entry. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, I don't know. Um, just check. He Fred's asked for IMVIS feedback. I think he's probably hitting all the IMVIS marks with this. With this, this is so much packed into this. It was so cool. I saw this and I did that. I was thinking just just that on its own on the is I'd have been really really happy about you know. Yeah, it's funny you you said about gender and how yours focused on gender. I think that this bar chart alone really kind of calls that out, right? The the stark difference between the number of men and the number of women. I'm just scrolling down. There's just I mean. We could be here all day talking about this viz alone. Nice. Yeah, it's interesting on that bit there where you, if you scroll up slightly. I like these, um, you know, where um, you've got these sort of blank um, underneath the Peace Prize, but you can see that the uh, all the organisations that have been awarded mm. a Nobel Prize have all been in peace, which I thought was quite interesting. Yeah, that's, that's true. And you can easily... I like the I like the bright turquoise that just you know that little kind of pop of colour. Which you can read. Really... Yeah. What do you think about this? Um, I guess it's almost kind of like a, a sankey, but with straight lines. I think the one that I thought was a little bit like busy looking. Not I, I, necessarily I like it more just that not as easy perhaps to read as some of the other sections. Yeah, it's, I don't think I've ever seen. Um, anyone else to take this approach before not with straight lines yeah but i'll be interested to know how he's how, how fred's built this <laughs> but <laughs> yeah i'll say on this, this is the only point the part of the viz where i'd say probably wasn't quite as easy to interpret perhaps if you're thinking that this is probably for students like a younger audience yeah i guess with the interactivities i'm looking at it now you do you can make sense of it pretty easily so you can oh, yeah. see like the dominant categories by country. Yeah. Um, I, I really like these, um, like the heat maps combined with the step bars. And yeah. it just, just really kind of brings, it's like almost like marginal histograms that like really help tell the story and you know, how things have changed over time. And he's, he's also called out the, the wars, right? Because they didn't have any peace prize or any prizes given in, during the wars, right? The world War. No, I think it was just some some prizes were, but the peace prizes weren't apart from I think like um the oh, what was it like the um the Red Cross was given the peace prize in like the final year of both wars I think. Okay. 
um, there weren't any individual peace prizes given. And I think a few other categories were cancelled as well. Um, because I know that there were some awarded because um, there were a couple of German um, laureates who were awarded prizes, but Hitler banned them from claiming their prizes. That was okay. around at that time. It's, quite, it's a really interesting history look at the Nobel Peace Prize. This is a really good, great this to get um, stuck in and um, you know, learning about it, but there's so much information around it. And it's sort of like, you know, it's really interesting when you look at like sort of like different periods of history and how that affected them as well. Yeah, it's really good to see the uh, the story of that uh, the um, Alfred Nobel as well and his life and yeah, I've never seen that before. This no, really, really nice um, the design yeah. timeline as well. Yeah, nice, nice, nice use of colors, blended blending in with the color of uh, of the prize, right? So it's prize, yeah. 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 I mean, in terms of like analysis, and if I'm is that a bee swarm chart? Uh, it is. I think it. Um, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah like, I think that's why this goes. You know, this is very proper analysis. Like <laughs> it goes. <laughs> into it, doesn't it? So I don't think there's much I can critique really in terms of. Analysis. No, exactly. I just, I'm just admiring. <laughs> The way it's laid out, it's really nice, consistent, easy to read, clean design. Like, storytelling is very, very good. It's a very logical order again. It tells the entire story, like history of the prize. Um, yeah, right. This, this will be a great resource, you know, like when when we when some when a teacher wants to talk about the prize and everything, they can just walk through this whole quiz, and the students can learn a lot. Oh, there we go. If you scroll down a bit, it actually tells all that story about um, the wars. You scroll down a bit further. Um, In the beast swarm. Yeah, there we go. There, no worthy discovery. Can you see that during World War Two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it tells all the stories behind that. That's really cool. I like. I like. I like that. Like, giving all that background info and all that context. Yeah. Really nice. No. Excellent job, Fred. Definitely. Oh, I'd love to see that feature as that visit of the day. Um, next one is by Gauri, and this is looking at the Indian Salt March in um, 1930. I remember learning about this for um, A level history. We did the, um, we learned all about the British Empire in India. This is like a major topic that we. Um, it's, uh, it's a very important event in history and uh, so but uh, I don't remember seeing this in Twitter. Oh yeah, I, I saw that and uh, I even asked her to submit it. Yeah, this, this, is, this is really small in size so that uh, literally everything is on the screen. So I can see like a nice timeline on the bottom. Yeah. Maybe the label uh, it could be rotated a bit. The labels could be rotated. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about that. Um, I'm going to yeah. click on and, a date uh, and see. Okay, so if you click on a date, the text changes. Uh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. That makes more sense. And uh, it would be better if she had used a map over there. So that sort the, of... These dots yeah. here. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. wondering what, what they meant. I was going to ask if they're place names. So that's like the... Yeah, the, it's, it's, it's a track, so where where he started and where he uh, ended the match. So if it, it was on a map, it would have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, more of it. Have to do it with the context. There. Maybe like he's like yeah. a mate or something there, and actually showed the um the journey that way. Can you? you the, um, they're not clickable now. It'd be nice if they were connected as well. If he, you know, to show the. Progression the of the march. Yeah, the yeah, route. Yeah. yeah, that's the word I was. Know, what, um, make line. No, if they've got the coordinates, like the Latin long. I think that's how you could do that in Tableau. Yeah. Oh, yeah. even if you just plotted it as a as a line chart, right? You could yeah, probably yeah. Figure out a way of, of doing it so they appeared without even without the map. But the map would be nice if it was available. You can't click on them. So is it an image? It might be. Interesting. Yeah, it's not interactive at all. 
Yeah, I like the fact that it sort of like goes through the different stages and you can switch like, you know, so it changes the text. So it gives you more information about each event of the, of the march. Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah, and the bands are called across the top as well to give you like, you know, like yeah, bands, bands. Give yeah, you the... like, yeah. And the design's really simple, right? So we're only using really black and the, the background color. So um, I would try, I'll probably make it a bit bigger because it is very, very small at the moment. So definitely. Um, yeah, I could utilize, but you, you can, you didn't, wouldn't even have to add any charts necessarily. You could just use, like, again, that white space. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely just give it more space and um, maybe include that map in its own kind of area as well. I don't think I've and make plot functions and uh, probably draw the route also. So that will be more information. Yeah. Mm. But no. I don't think I've seen this on this topic before. Again, though, it's a brand new one for me. And I've not, never seen this visualized in Tableau. So that's really cool. Yeah, no, it's good. Okay, uh, the next one is by uh, Jagriffy, and this is looking at children and women's protection rights. Wait for it to load up. I think this one was entered for diversity and data as well. I think. Okay, it's in green law. Yeah. It's just there's so much information in this viz. I spent a lot of time looking at it when it was first published. It's almost like a fact sheet. Um, yeah, it's very informative yeah. and much needed awareness that, that that needs to be created right mm. just wait for it to load up but while we're doing that um yeah it's, it's not something you see visualized very often so it's really interesting to see it in this way sorry it's taken forever <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact. I like. I mean, we can see it a bit on the screen, can't we? I like the um, the fact that you've got like different sections for each of the kind of like like the Amendment Act, like the major sort of events in history, almost. Yeah, Tableau doesn't like me. <laughs> um, I'll try and look at it like this, so I won't touch it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it, it it's good use of color for um highlighting kind of like the the length what mainly it's mainly like length of time for imprisonment i think in red or anything related to imprisonment um i would I, if i was to give any like constructive feedback i'd say maybe give it some more room and more spacing between each of the different um sections because there is just so much information here um i think it, it would be a lot easier to read if it was just spaced out a little bit more yeah, I think, yeah, a bit more white space. Like, there's a lot of text. And I know that that, I know that the text that's on there is very, like, it's important. No, it's really informative. So it's almost a shame to take it away. But yeah, like, a bit, it either needs more space or less text to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, it just needs a little bit more room to breathe. But yeah. I'd also say, like, there's different fonts here as well. Just in the first section underneath the title, I think that looks like it's Times New Roman. Mm. And then the text is different, but that could just be because, um, where it's published on public hard to tell sometimes yeah it? i think this first part is an image it just looks like the it, okay. it's been put in as an image perhaps but and the rest maybe is in tableau so it could well be the case that that's happened yeah, really really interesting content on this yeah i i like the fact she has highlighted all the landmark acts that was passed in the past 40 years so these are like very important issues in india and uh, this is a great place. Probably she could be a law student. I'm not sure, but this is something which I have never seen someone, you know, visualizing things on law. So, yes. Yeah. yeah, I would. I just consider maybe even breaking it out into sections, perhaps, so we could have uh, like paging, so um, you could see like each act. Um, on a different sheet maybe and you could scroll through it as a story um, rather than showing everything at the same time oh yeah that'll be great a uh, book kind of a format right with a yeah maybe with like tabs at the top so you could click through and see okay uh, each act individually with the analysis yeah, and then yeah. you'd have more room for the charts that way as well 
without losing so any of the text. Maybe you should also use the story, uh, story option points. in Tableau. Yeah, that would yeah. work as well. Yeah. Yeah, but no, I really appreciate this, Viz, and it's super informative. Okay, uh, moving on to the next one. Um, this one's by Jessica, and this is looking at trends on Twitter for January um, 2021. So very recent history. <laughs> so we can see here... Um, the continents of the world and we can explore the countries and see the top trends um unsurprisingly it was the u.s election uh, by the looks of it so we've got lots of trumps and bidens um, okay so we could if we click on let's say nigeria i just want to see if there's any interactivity um India talks about Trump. Okay, <laughs> okay so I clicked on uh, Nigeria. So the, the number one most uh, tweeted topic was Trump, <laughs> followed by Biden, followed by Republicans. I think all of these are no, uh, no. driven by the US. Yeah. Um, Hood is a, well, just as a random, like. Well, that was all to do with the stock market, though, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing Robin Hood is no remember man. They're having after all the Trump and under all the Trump stuff. Yes, this is India, so yeah, pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. COVID as well. Um, yeah, I would say I just noticed on the um, tooltip, I'll just clean that up a bit um, so that we've got um, the. Yeah, so get rid of the average zero. Yeah, just the standard stuff. I like how um, Jessica's highlighted like the top, the number one like bar in a different colour. Um, which I think is most of the time is Trump. Um, so and so it's always, it's always, always yeah. Trump. Uh, and then the summary of the kind of the um, trends worldwide as well, which is nice. Yeah, so Robin Hood is an app. It's not Robin Hood, yeah. married man. I'm unfortunately Eve. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bit disappointed, but it's okay. Um, I like how. Um, concise it is it's, it's i wonder if this is mobile friendly because the, the the style it's, oh yeah i should have checked that shouldn't i That's yeah awesome. i like the simple colors as well like it's just that one highlight color throughout it's really consistent um yeah and yeah. she's super yeah. clear about what countries are included as well by including the map like this yeah it's like the interaction there so like again going back to like young people like it's great to have a bit of interaction because it kind of like you know it gets kids kind of interested you know like immediately sort of like increases that engagement level but it's very simple as well to interact with you know you've got the return to home button like it's very intuitive which i quite like mm. yeah no it's a great job okay um the next one is i think i went in the wrong order no i didn't okay next one is by John, um, and this is look at the, the United Kingdom's 20th and 21st century wars. So we've got the wars by the UK wars by era. We've had a lot of wars. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. To be fair, that is pretty much what we learn at school, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's very war focused. I find. Yeah, so I'm just going to scroll through. Um, so you, you learn about uh, uh, Anglo-Saxons, Vikings and all those wars and all, is it? I mean, yeah. That also would be well, at primary school, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's what my daughter's been learning about recently is all about the way that Anglo-Saxons and Vikings lived. Um, okay. They have you can they have a lot of visitor centres around the country where you can actually go and live like an Anglo-Saxon for the day or something. Oh. You know, they live okay. <laughs> things like that and experience what life might have been like back then. And they do these like um, pretend like battles as well. Um, you can go to like reenactments and things. The pie charts on the map. Yeah, it's, it's a. There's a lot of information on the map, right? So we've got. Yeah. 
I'd maybe try to switch in the pie charts for something different just because they're quite hard to read when they're laid on top of each other. Um, I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on that, but I'd probably maybe just change it to a bubble map. Or something yeah. Like yeah, totally. And the filters also, you can use the multi-select option or something and you can save some space over there so, for the related period and side. Yeah, there's so many um, mm. conflicts that happen near each other as well with the, and with the size of the pies all different. Like, I think they're sized by... Um, let me just, just trying to figure out. The number of years okay so the length of time so this it's quite difficult to interpret everything that's that going on yeah yeah i would maybe be tempted to change the price to something else i think and just do them as dots and then you could maybe like have the option to so, like flip between them using, using a chart yeah. On, yeah using a chart on top of a map it's, it's always effective when you use, use for a smaller uh, region if you have a smaller region in the context, it, it'll be uh, better. But there's this like, I mean. Yeah, so we, so we have the filter way. here. So exactly what you're describing, right? So if we yeah. click against, for instance, but then, so we're, we're left with just the circles, which is yeah already easier to read, but it would be better if they had a border so we could actually see. Um, no, I'd make them a yeah. path, sort of border around them. Yeah. yeah, I'll be tempted to get rid of the pies and just do the circles because you sure. don't need to have the all option anyway. So can you please hover over the bar charts on the right? Yeah. Let's see what. Okay. So it look again. It looks like it's it's not stacked bars, but it's um. What's it? No, it is stacked bars. It's just a lot of them. It's very. I'd make. I'd be inclined to make this a bit bigger mm. yeah, again like increase like there's more white space but just give everything a bit more space to breathe kind of thing yeah okay so they've used rank is it rank of total conflict years yeah yeah so the the, the irish uh, one was the longest 78 years okay so the tooltip can be cleaned up a bit i guess Yeah, because I guess you wouldn't really you'd normally call out that it's a rank. You could just say maybe it's the longest conflict of 78 years. or Maybe not even in the chart, just at the side. And then if we carry on, um, we've got another map here. So this is looking at um, the name of the side. For each war so we can select a conflict um, so we can see it's okay so let's so the name of this, the names of the sides change for each war so obviously the world wars are <laughs> across the world um then we've got these more regionalized ones as well Would you just play this on a map? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the, I don't know. Just think how I might do it differently. It's a lot of information in this bit for sure. Yeah, a lot. For each and every war, uh, they have mapped like which side, all the different sides, parties participating. So that's yeah. a lot of effort. Because I think, the, 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 yeah, the issue, the, the map's good of showing where the countries are. Um, yeah. But then, you know, we have the, the normal limitations of a map that some countries are very, have a very small land mass. Right. Um, yeah. And the, I guess, so the Irish we can see the Irish Civil War was fought between the United Kingdom and an Ireland, but we don't get a sense of kind of where it, it happened. I think this is just very like showing the territories, isn't it? Each 
outside. Yeah. Battle locations or anything like that. It works quite well, I think, when you've got like just two sides. Yeah, but then when you've got the big, the, like the world wars, and you include obviously a, a lot more countries, like here, Second World War. I was going to say the Second World War. <laughs> That's going to be big. <laughs> so here you've got the, the Allies and then you've got the, like, the occupations as well. At least they've um, grouped, though, like the Allies. Like, that, otherwise, otherwise, if they hadn't, it would have been everything. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure a lot of effort has gone behind the data collection. So mm. this is a lot. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting to dive into. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. It's interesting. There's a lot of scope. scope this. Uh, I think the map part, the readability, you know, like if it's uh, a bit better, then this could be a great one it'd be nice if the map was a bit bigger as well i think if we could, um it's quite small at the moment and i'd be inclined to maybe move the um the color key like maybe onto the map itself or somewhere else so we have to actually use the space for the map more than we're using it at the moment for like the kind of filters and things yeah just uh, direct, put it directly under the filters and yeah that map Maybe in, maybe change the uh, selection to a drop down so it takes up less room, because I'd really like to see the map like front and center. Yeah, from maybe the same device like across the map will actually just a simple drop down. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that top chart is almost like a timeline, isn't it? Yes. Like, so we've got a Gantt chart. So in the yeah, the I length of each war. I really like that. Yeah, I think that's really effective. The way that they can um, use that. It's really, really cool. It's interesting how we've got like the, the number of years and how many of those years were spent at war. And then the percentage, it's an interesting approach. Yeah. Okay. A lot um, of effort on data collection, and I think she has even done a lot of analysis to understand about each and every war. Yeah, this is much more a um, exploratory viz, right? As opposed to a lot of the others we've seen today. So it's this one's relying on you to spend time with it and interact, and you can see it being quite useful for um, for students. Okay, so now I'm really excited to announce we actually have a surprise co-host uh, joining us today. Um, I've obviously I've been reviewing with Eve and Vinod up until now, but we ran out of time. Um, and rather than review the rest of the visitors on my own, I thought it'd be really nice if I could get someone else from the community to join me. And um, thankfully, Michelle kindly volunteered. So I'm really excited to be joined by Michelle Freeman. And we're going to review the next around 11 visits together. Um, now, I think Michelle has participated in pretty much every single IronQuest round, at least in the last 12 months. Um, she's been a real like, advocate of the program and, and really supportive. So, Michelle, I'm really honored to be joined by you today. Um, welcome to IronQuest. Um, it would be great if you could give us just a quick 30 second um, like intro to who you are. Possible. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here. As Sarah said, I've been participating regularly. This is one of my favorite community projects. I love the ability to stretch my creative skills. I have been actively participating in the community since 2018. Um, Makeover Monday was sort of my gateway into it. <laughs> and I've also done Project Health Viz, uh, Diversity in Data, and some of the other initiatives. And I'm really excited to be here today. Thank you. Yeah, I do feel like you do everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I, I love it when you do like the, the like triple whammy kind of visits, which tick off like, I think you did one this month for Iron Quest actually was like this diversity in data. This was good for um, like project health is like it's everything, uh, which is super fun. And if you can do that, then it's a massive time saver. <laughs> so uh, yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's because I'm lazy or efficient, <laughs> really, really efficient. Yeah really efficient we'll go with that all right so uh, without further ado let's get started and get into the um visits so 
let me just bring up the sheets. So the first one we're going to look at is by Mafuge. Uh, and this one is looking at um, the ethnic diversity of the MB, uh, MLB, sorry. Um, so, okay, so we're looking at, this is a, I think a diversity in data um, visualization. Um, so we're looking at the ethnic, the ethnic diversity of major league baseball and how that's changed over time so we can see the different races um, and the, the, make, the makeup of those teams. What's really interesting is you can see um, the increase in the number of Latino players um, or the proportion of Latino players over time especially since um, it's really picked up around like the early 90s um, and interestingly the, the proportion of African-American players has actually increased and then it actually fell again more recently which is I don't know much about the uh, about Major League base, um, Baseball, so uh, if you can add any insights from the American perspective, that would be great. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, I'm actually not a huge baseball fan, so I have very little information. I should have brought in my husband. He's a much more, uh, knows a whole lot more about it. Um, but I, I do love how the area chart makes it very easy to see um, the different proportions and how they've mm -hmm. changed. Um, I was sort of wondering whether flipping the axes so that um, the um, African American and Latino and Asian were on the bottom might make it a little easier to see that peak in Valley. Um, yeah, because I guess you run the risk of, with these kind of stack charts that you the trend is over. It, it kind of it's dominated by the. The, the portion that you have at the bottom right so mm -hmm. um it's sometimes it could be it can hide underlying trends by presenting data in this way so it would be interesting to see as you say some of the smaller categories at the bottom with the kind of the, the big like, white category on top um i like the design though i think it, like as you say i really like the um the simplicity of it and the way it is really easy to see those kind of trends over time in a single view um, and we have the additional like kind of information at the top which is always good um, I guess one thing it's not here is is the actual number of players so we don't know if the number of players in um, major league baseball has increased over that time period or, or you know that would be quite interesting to see I think yeah, I think particularly if you're looking for more of an iron biz format, digging a little more into the data and providing a little more context. Um, yeah, yeah. If it, uh, yeah, I'd say if this was going to be an iron biz, um, biz, I mean, this is a great place to start. Um, but we definitely need some more analysis, some some more kind of charts showing different ways of displaying that data. Maybe some additional data brought in there to see. Maybe I'm just exploring the reasons why perhaps um, these these trends are happening, and maybe why some why that that it would be really interesting to dig into certain groups. So perhaps why has there been an increase in uh, Latino players? I think the one of the other things that I found a little challenging. I find the um, white and the Asian colors pretty much the same, and while they're mm. separated on the chart, I think uh, maybe choosing a different color might be a little more helpful. Um, yeah, I and then agree. just sort of one of the t more tidying things, if you make your axes go a little bit above 100, then you'll have a little more space so that you can move that 2.1 up so that it's not mm -hmm. laying on top of the 6.7. Um, yeah, to no, make I, that just to make that a lot cleaner because there's a little bit of overlap there, right? I, I'd be inclined to actually move these labels and actually put well, move this kind of categories mm -hmm. and put them at the at the edge of the kind of the section that oh, they yeah. belong to um i mean i i am a big fan of doing this whole like text shading i do it all the time but i think um if you added just do what you said you know extend the axes and then add those labels at the end um you could free up some space and maybe make this chart a little bit bigger yeah and the other thing i noticed is it doesn't quite fit on the screen but it feels like it could, which just mm. would make it a little easier for um, for viewing, because um, I think there that chart could very easily be shrunk up a little bit. Yeah, I agree. And then perhaps to just maybe 
strengthen the storytelling point some annotations perhaps would work well here so we could call out particular years i mean we have some of this in the text at the top where there's reference to years and players and things like that but if we could actually point on the chart where those years were and, and kind of describe those things as they happen that might be quite nice yeah yeah definitely yeah but no great job okay uh so the well next one, <laughs> the next one we're going to look at is by matty Seuss, uh, and this one is looking at the roman emperors and this is just general feedback uh, for this one thank you yeah this one was really pretty yeah i i love his visits that every month he does something just really unique and amazing like yeah and really interesting like i learned about roman empires one of those <laughs> yes. that i would love to show my kids that's the beauty of this round that's we've learned so many different things about all different areas of history like every viz is completely different and a different topic so yeah, i love it history is definitely not my strong suit <laughs> <laughs> see i studied history up until like i went to university but um i i i dug into like particular areas like i did a lot of um u.s civil rights history which i found like really interesting like martin Luther king and things like that and um, so I always love visits that talk about that topic but i didn't focus so much on um like ancient history or like roman emperor or anything like that so yeah don't ask me any questions because it's not my my strong suit uh, no i'm definitely not gonna be quizzing you <laughs> Oh, you know, it's funny. We were just talking about how we like both. I also use the uh, text for the legend and I normally do not like the sort of standard tableau legend, but I feel like it actually works for this chart um, because yeah. it's aligned nicely with um, the with the label down there um, and it just fits there nicely. I'm not sure. Like, I feel like the chart on the right I sort of have to work a little too hard to figure out what he's but saying. The, the, the diamond. Um, yeah. yeah. So maybe a title would be helpful? Yeah, I guess if I look at this, this obviously it doesn't fit on this page. It's quite a big viz. If I look at just this, you kind of miss that. I initially thought it was like some kind of a decoration, but then I realized, okay, it's actually a, a, a viz. Um, so perhaps, yeah, as you say, a title would be good. Um, I mean, it's quite interesting that we've got um, like Augustus served for 40 years, which, you know, in comparison to the others is a, is, a, is a long time. Yeah. No, I love that chart choice, actually, and how that works with the helmet. Yeah, I, I love that. It's really creative. Um, and I think here, I know we, we've got a lot of colours in play, um, and I think they're all pretty I mean, we do get some kind of slight repetition in the greens and the purples, but I think that's fine because there, there's some distance between them. And, and I, I'd say that chart we were just talking about on the right with the diamonds, I, I guess it's it's more there for it's it's more of a I don't know a decorative piece than a uh, something that you're supposed to be able to see instantly those insights, right? So you can still hover and see the names and the tooltips and the duration. So I think it works well. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and I really like um, sort of the squared off Veronis down at the bottom. Um, what would you think about including a little bit of shading to highlight sort of the more, um, the higher percentages? I'm just wondering, since sometimes it's a little harder to get those distinctions, or do you think it's yeah i think that would work well if we use a, a, like different shades of this kind of yellow mm -hmm. perhaps um because we i do like the like the bursts of color that we have in this viz so there's like the purples and the pinks i guess once you get down to the bottom that it is all this, like a single shade so i agree um perhaps just doing some shading on the on the bigger categories would be nice especially where they don't stand out um instantly it's like i guess this one is fine we can see instantly right birthright is the most prominent uh, category but on these ones you've got more of a distribution agreed and most i want to say of the tooltips are really nicely format up yeah but uh yeah. the um i like the tooltips on the um on the bars here if i hover they, 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 they came up before here we go yeah and nicely formatted you've got a lot of information in there and 
a lot of attention has been paid to like the size of the text, shading and things like that. Yeah, no, I agree. I worked when I did my viz on um, the myths and legends of the mythical creatures in the, in England. Um, I did like a textured background like this and it was incredibly difficult to work with. So I have an appreciation for anyone that's able to pull it off. And I think it's pulled off really well in this viz. Um, I had like, no end of issues trying to get that to work um, and I really like the font choice as well so it's it's, it's very on theme um, but it's still quite easy to read. Yeah no it's very sharp um, mm. and really works well with this. I'm curious what made it hard uh, to work with the textured background because it looks gorgeous. Um, just making the, the the text like visible enough on it um, and also because my viz was so long I was trying to use an image and stretch it out and it became really blurry so I had to get a really high quality crisp kind of um, one to, so I could just stretch and it would be fine um, so that I, I think I tried to five different versions before we actually got it working and looking like semi okay um, what do you think oh, of the worked map? Hmm? what do you think of the map here I really like it. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like it's very subtle. Like I often don't like maps, but um, just probably because I'm rubbish at them. Um, <laughs> I think it fits in really well here and I like being able to see all the different places they're from. Yeah. I really love, like you say, how subtle it is and how it just blends in. Um, Cause there's always a risk when you include a map that it becomes really a kind of boxy and doesn't really fit with the design um but this one works really well it just flows into like the uh the background and blends in and i like that he fixed it um that's one yes <laughs> yeah you start zooming out and then you get stuck <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i like this chart too i think um i like how he's repeated that uh, that kind of diamond design here it's nice yeah, yeah no, a lot of really nice consistency. Yeah, no, it's great. Great job. Okay, so the next one is by you. So I'm going to skip that one <laughs> since you're here uh, <laughs> and then go straight on to Nicholas. And this is I am Viz Feedback and it's the history of French monarchs. Oh, okay, so the link isn't working. So let me just. Oh, yeah. Nicholas, it should be fine. Hopefully he's not taking it down or anything. No, it's there. Um, I, I've actually pulled it up. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I'll just say right now, I know very little about French monarchs. So again, don't expect me to provide any additional um, context on this. I love that you can translate um if you click the icon yeah. on the right it translates between english and french yeah that's it's really cool we actually had another viz for this round um which was displayed in both english and in japanese which i'd never seen before both at the same time but i really do love the uh, the bilingual like visits oh, cool so i will say for my old eyes it's very hard to read <laughs> yeah the um the text is really small um, I, I love the design. Um, I, network chart, correct? For the most of it? Yes, yeah. But I really like the timelines running up and down the side and then the stacked bar for showing the um, different... The, the eras. And... Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of information in the... Um... The tool tips as well. Oh, cool. They are slow to load. Oh, yeah, those are very nicely done. It's loading better on yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really like it. It's it's um something I could imagine being like framed right in a in a school or or, or something. Um, it's, it's really hard to do these. I know people try them with the the, the British uh, monarchs and it does get it's like a family tree isn't it it gets very confusing and you have lots of different branches going off in different directions um what i will say is i'm not sure i'm getting any insights out of it no it's kind of i mean we've got the information presented and it's kind of it is what it is i guess what's interesting is um 
the icons, right? So we've got these different icons up here to say who that person was or some, maybe some other information. So it's not we've got monarch parent information, monuments, money, dead. I'm not quite sure uh, what's dead. Because <laughs> I guess I mean all these people we know have died, otherwise they'd be incredibly old. Um, so yeah, I'm wondering. You know, maybe it, it's it's so beautiful. Like the design is clearly sort of this one piece framed, but then you miss out on your analysis and storytelling elements. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we. this is, it's great as it is, but if it, if it was going to be entered for Iron Viz, it would definitely need some more data behind it. And I appreciate that's not easy with this kind of data, right? It, it's kind of is what it is. We're just looking at um, kind of reigning periods of different monarchs and to gather data, you'd probably need data on each of them. And it just, it would be a very big project to try and attempt. Um, so yeah, I get, I totally get what you mean. I guess you get a sense of the length of these kind of eras. Um, and what's interesting is there's a lot of kind of interconnected parts at the, down at the bottom. Um, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there are different icons that, so money, monuments at the top. Yeah, so that's the one I called out before. So like, um, let's find a monument to our money. Here we go. I guess, yeah. uh, uh, are they just additional facts perhaps? I'm not sure. So maybe a little more context on what the purpose is. Hmm. Uh, maybe that's under information. Then the, the information Huh. I'm not sure because we have sometimes that we have a parent and then we have a, so we've got Charles here who's a parent then then Louis who's a parent and then um, the, the, the Napoleon over here who's a monarch but I'm not too sure yeah, and I'm not positive what the distinction between the two different timelines on the left and the right are. Yeah. So it, it, it's beautiful, but I think more context could really, um, I guess, take it to the next level. Yeah, I think the timeline on the left is just an overall, you know, we've got every hundred years i think the timeline on the right is calling out some key dates so if you hover mm -hmm. over those so they run in they're, they're aligned right uh, i think mm -hmm. that the one on the right is more detailed in the sense that something happened in this year that's worth <laughs> that's worth noting um, <laughs> i think that's what the differentiation is so that might be interesting some annotations like within um on the screen as opposed yeah. to having it all be inter interactive i don't know yeah no, i agree but no i really like the way it's framed right it's almost it's like it's already in its own little frame uh, which yeah. is nice no, great job okay uh so the next one is by shola uh, and this one's looking at the presidents of nigeria so i actually encouraged him to enter this uh, when i saw it and that's not the vis. <laughs> no, if you go back to his yeah. profile. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's not what the vis I was expecting. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I encouraged him to enter it for um, Iron Quest because it came out around the same time as I, I launched the history round. Um, so if, if, in case you don't know, my husband's from Nigeria, so it's almost like my second adopted country um so we've got a lot of appreciation for this biz and it's really great he's used the 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 flag colors so uh, obviously red and white so not red and white so green and white um the the flag of uh, nigeria um this is really yeah. interesting to see so like um 
who Harry is the current uh, president. He's he's quite old um, and frail, I would say. Um, so but it's quite interesting to see like the, uh, the length of time they've been in office and their age. Because in contrast, the president before him was Jonathan, or good luck, Jonathan, um, and he was relatively young for, uh, as a ruler. So I'm trying to understand what sort of the background design is. Um, this shaded area, you mean? No, I, I, yeah, I get the shaded to the right, but sort of the puzzle piece, or I, I don't know what to call it. Um, it, it definitely provides interesting. How do you mean? Um, so like around the 36, 37, you see how the shape? Oh yeah, the kind of the, there's like a shaded box. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sort of struggling with, I, Is that just I, maybe a design element? I think, I think it is. Yeah. I, yeah, I personally, I might see what it looks without it. I guess I th it might have been included to try and like make them pop a little mm. bit. Um, but I guess the problem we have is that the, I think the label isn't in that kind of shaded area, right? Right. Yeah, I think I would look at it without, um, I really like having the um, right hand side shaded and the left hand side lighter. And I love the head of state with the curvy line. I think the other design elements work really well for me. I think that one um, is just a little bit distracting. Yeah. Would you, I, would you can, cause here we've got the shaded area. So we've got, we can see presidents over the average age and then below the average age and there's a kind of a darker area behind the the older kind of section mm -hmm. um i might consider just seeing what it looked like with just with that average line because i really like that but without mm -hmm. the shading because it might i don't know it might be, it might just make the design pop a bit more if we had that consistent kind of mm -hmm. um i guess creamy kind of color at the back yeah no i agree um really nicely designed tooltips um yeah a lot of extra effort because i know what a pain it can be to make certain values colored mm -hmm. yeah i've got a blog post on that it's like one of my pop most popular blog posts i wrote years ago <laughs> it's funny um but i, I appreciate this because you don't see a lot of visits on on the history of nigeria uh so i got really excited when i saw this one um and I, I don't know much about Nigerian presence beyond the ones that I can remember, which are the two most recent, right? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I like how they did the legend as well. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's really creative. I guess, um, yeah, if, we were, if it was going to be entered for Ironvids, we'd, we'd, you'd need some additional analysis, different, it's addition, looking at maybe additional data on the presidents. Um, I guess, again, we have the same challenge as we had with the, the French monarchs one is that this data is really hard to come by. Right? So it would involve a lot of research, but it would be nice to see um, perhaps some more information on, on those presidents and maybe some interesting things that happened while they were um, the head of state. Maybe some timelines or things like that. Yeah, like if they died during office. Yeah. Um, one thing that we haven't got here is that is a timeline, right? So we've got the, mm -hmm. I, know if, I know that Buhari is the current president, so I know that that's the most recent and we work backwards. But um, if you didn't know that, you, or maybe, you know, you, weren't, you, you might not know where to begin. We don't have like a current year and a year in history unless you hover over the tooltips. Yes, that would definitely be helpful to have that content. Yeah. Even if it's just a subtle from the beginning to the, you know, at the top of the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Great job. Um, I want to see more visits on Nigerian history. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So the so next, next one is by Ryan and this is on the Apostle Paul and this is just general feedback. So this is another topic that I know nothing about because I'm Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> so 
fine. Don't worry. I mean, I, I, I've read the Bible, but I can't say I remember all of it. Um, I really like this. I, I like. I really like Ryan's design. Um, I really loved his viz last month on um, his like Fitbit or ex, like fitness data, um, and I just really like how he like presents his his vizs. They're really cool. Yes. Um, I love the way that the, the map kind of just blends in with this one. And and did you see like when you click the buttons, it shows you the different steps of the journey. That is really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, I I just I just love it, and I mean, if we look at this, there's only a few colours in play, right? We've got mm -hmm. just the yet the like the yellow, the white, the blue, and we've got the annotations, which is something I always really appreciate. Mm -hmm. And the, the box at the top left changes um, when you change the buttons. Yeah. So that's a really nice detail as well. I think there's another one that could potentially fit on one page so you didn't have to scroll up and down. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think you... ever since my uh, visas exploded on your and Eva's screens and you finally taught me like how to properly size them, I've been obsessed with either keeping them on one screen or making them like worth scrolling, not worth scrolling for, but like longer. Yeah, I do. I remember that. It was funny. I just forgot. <laughs> I think we were using uh, like PDF um, sizing or that was some <laughs> something crazy. I think I was using <laughs> either automatic sizing or like I don't remember what it was. But I just like, remember them being huge. <laughs> and finally, she just got so frustrated. She pulled it down to figure out what was going on. <laughs> so why is it so big? <laughs> I, I struggle because it is, it is unpredictable um, with the sizing, especially once you publish, right? Um, I, I try and stick to a standard size for, for business dashboards, but then even then it's sometimes you get a little bit that's cut off at the bottom and it's, it's really annoying. Um, yeah. So um, he wanted Iron Viz feedback, correct? Um, I think it's just general. Or was this general? Yeah, just general. Okay, sorry. So we're looking at so the number of books that Paul wrote. I'm just trying to get this vis and tool tip to come up. It's just been a little bit slow. The one on the, the chart on the right would be nice if it was sorted um, in descending order. I understand Paul's at the top because it's Paul and it's about Paul, mm. but he's already highlighted it. So yeah, agreed. Or maybe is it because he's it's the same the order as this. It's the same order as this chart. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting question. Do you keep them consistent or do you sort in descending? Yeah, but I agree. Yeah, because Paul's already highlighted. We can see him really easily. Um, yeah, I like these bands that call out like mm -hmm. the overall percentage that Paul accounts for. Um, I might even go bolder. <laughs> yeah. But that's just me. Yeah, I agree. I'd be inclined to add, maybe just add a look. I know we said make it smaller, but maybe just make it look wider. Because um, mm. this is quite, it feels like it's a little bit crammed in on, over on the right. So just adding some more space here would might, might be quite nice. I don't think I'd change anything about the map. I love it. Um, I love the, the buttons. Um, maybe one thing you could do is just show the complete journey. Because I don't think there's a way... Currently, you can mm -hmm. show the individual sections, but you can't show the whole thing in one go. Yeah, I think that's a good suggestion. And again, really nice tool tabs. Yeah, and really nicely formatted um, annotations as well. It's not often, uh, that's why I read that blog post a while back, because it's not often people go beyond like the standard ones that come up. But you can do, funny enough, rounded corners, which is something that Tablet doesn't do very well in any other area, but you can do it for annotations. Um, and he's used those here, which is good to see. Yeah, the one thing I would say is the Viz and Tooltip and the chart on the right, um, maybe choose um, for the chart that pops in um, size to width so that the bars don't, if you hover lower, um, the mm -hmm. bars get very large it's the entire view isn't it yeah 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 that, great that's getting a bit nitpicky <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> but no, I love this. Um, great job. Yeah. Okay. Really nicely done. The next this one is one by was so much fun. <laughs> this is by Sarah, and this is looking at space exploration. And it's I am this feedback. Yeah, this was super fun. There is a lot here. <laughs> So we're looking at the history of space exploration from 1961 to 2020. Uh, There's the play. And we can use this. We've got the click yeah, the triangle to play or move through the different years. Okay. So the rockets take off. <laughs> That's so cool. It is very cool. I, mean, I love the attention to detail here. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave that playing for a second. Oh, and it's so much clearer on your screen than it is on mine. Really? It's really yeah. Are you on Windows? Yes. Yeah. Are you on a Mac? No, I'm on Windows. On Chrome. Uh, I'm on Chrome too. <laughs> it's really strange. Yeah. I love these icons. I think that they're just they're just so cool. I saw this as I just fell in love with them. Yes, I agree. I feel like there could be a little more space. Yeah, there's a lot packed in here. Um, I agree. That maybe you mean more space on the timeline, perhaps. I'm trying to think. It just all feels very compact. And that's something I sort of fight against a lot um because i again like to be very efficient but yeah maybe just make the whole thing longer would be mm -hmm. beneficial um because the, the icons are so detailed it's something i'd usually advise against i'm very like the minimal minimal icons keep them all looking the same same colors and that breaks all of these rules <laughs> but <laughs> i like the playfulness of it, it almost it's it's like very cartoony and I, I like that yeah um one thing i would change is i i'd do something with this color legend um mm -hmm. try and incorporate it into the design somehow or just it doesn't really fit with the with everything else with the, having that standard tableau one there it's funny because we've mentioned <laughs> the kind of business it works here it doesn't work here um but i feel like just um yeah just incorporating it into the design somehow would be nice yeah i agree so this is another one with tons of interesting details, but not a lot of analysis. Yeah. Um, and maybe even including a band in the top chart about like the total flights or total astronauts or something. Um, yeah, I think what, what would be nice with this is that obviously at the moment it's, it's sorted by country in alphabetical order, which is fine. Um, it's tricky because you want the the rockets to obviously go up. <laughs> you don't want them going <laughs> across because that just doesn't work. Um, but at the same time, because of that, we have these rotated labels, and it's, it's something that I always advise against. But it's it's tough because I don't know like what the alternative is because there's no way you'd be able to fit the country names in without them all overlapping and it looking awful. But what I was going to say was currently sorting it by country. Um, it might be nice if we could flip it and arrange it by date so we could see the those um those individual flights but um mm -hmm. maybe have a timeline you know, a time yeah i get well i guess it's this but displayed yeah, in this that's way true. because um you kind of lose that kind of sense of when mm. they had the different like space races with like the Soviet Union and the US and things, you kind of lose that here because you don't, you can't see it happening at, at when it happened. You guess you get the timeline, but you, you have to kind of really spend time with it to dig in. And these are more kind of this, uh, events rather than individual countries and what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And maybe if the if the events fall into any natural groupings maybe do some charts on that yeah because i think when you look at when you learn this in school you'd probably do it with some form of um timeline right so you'd maybe say okay the first person to go into space was from this country and this happened on this date 
um yeah like here um is it yeah the ussr yeah. i don't know if there's anything to annotate in the chart on the top as well i can't um i think it's yeah i'm just it's, again it doesn't fit on the screen but it's a tiny tiny bit on the width that's that's not fitting it was an argument i couldn't see the united states yeah just some more analysis would be good but i can imagine this being printed off again and on a, as a poster in a, in a school especially this um i think it's really nice oh definitely I love the background as well with the stars. Uh, one thing I might change as well is this uh, kind of like grid. I don't know how you feel about that, Michelle. I think, I mean, I appreciate separating the elements, but I agree. Maybe see if you really want to have that separation, like a little fainter, very thin lines, but I'm not sure it's necessary. If you made it a little longer and just added some white space, I think that would naturally separate them. Yeah. Because we can see that completely separate charts. There's definitely no, no overlap there. Um, and no, the and very different panel, styles. Yeah, and the panel at the side, I think, fits nicely as it is. I don't, I don't know. I feel if we took those lines away, it might just, it might just look and feel like a little more like one piece. For the moment, it, it feels like it's in two distinct parts. You have the rockets, and then you have the timeline. Mm. Oh, it took me a minute to figure out why the timeline color changed, and then I realized it's um, past versus future. Yeah, yeah, and current. So, so we have the Mars, yeah. um, then it's just happened. Yeah. I wonder, would you keep the colors consistent with the rocket ship colors at the top instead of the blue for the past? Because you could still have that, like, like you could do it yellow to orange to red. Yeah, I think maybe that might work better because we introduced new colors here. And I think purely just for design reasons. Um, yeah, I think if we kept to the kind of the, the, the red orange color palette, that might work. Mm -hmm. You still get those pops of the fun blue with the icons. Yeah maybe that maybe maybe she tried that and maybe it just didn't look right with the icons mm, could be yeah no great job yeah well done okay so the next one is by siku and this is looking at african american inventors so this was uh diversity and data i believe mm -hmm. as well so the hundred patented inventions created by african americans I had no idea that Frederick McKinney Jones had so many. It's a 21. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Just looking at this quickly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's interesting that um, I, I wonder what um, what defines a key invention. <laughs> I think that would be a, a good thing to define here. Um, yeah. Very helpful. And, you know, maybe tell a little bit of a st more of a story um, about the inventors or about the history. So it says click on a dot to go to a patent. And I'm going to do that. So, um, so Frederick McKinley Jones invented the automatic refrigeration for long haul trucks. Oh, cool. So if I click on that. It'll take you to the page. Which it does. Yeah. Since this doesn't fit on one page, probably you could make it longer so it doesn't scroll. Yeah, because it's just a tiny again, a tiny bit that's not yeah. um, fitting on one page here. And uh, I have to say that there's a lot of white space. I'd love to see that used somehow. Yeah, I'd like to see maybe some, maybe for the key inventions, even if we embedded maybe something here. So when you clicked on them, you got something about those key inventions that might be quite interesting yeah and i think maybe adding a little padding um so it doesn't run quite to the edge of the page yeah so. yeah i get what you mean i guess one thing we haven't we can't see here is uh, again time so we've got the the years in the um in the tooltip but 
maybe if this if there was a way of sorting it so we could see that over time not not by person the person's name would fall into the tooltip in that case but just a timeline so we could see the inventions over time mm. and having the ability to switch between the two views because i guess mckinley jones dominates because he has 21 which is <laughs> insane um and then the other it, it, the others have a lot fewer yeah if you made it a little longer, you could probably make the uh, numbers a little bit bigger as well for the total number of event uh, inventions. Yeah. What do you think about aligning the names to the right instead of to the left? Yeah, that might be quite nice. Just aligning it next to this number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure why DataViz is highlighted in blue. Um, I'm not sure. I'd probably just leave it in white. Mm -hmm. I do like it though. It's, it's, um, you can spend a lot of time with this and looking at the individual um, inventions. Well, I was just looking at Frederick McKinley Jones. Like each of his inventions are all very different. <laughs> um, they're not all they don't all seem to be in one particular industry which is, is quite interesting that is interesting see that's a great story to tell yeah maybe yeah and the other thing i'd maybe i'd like to see is gender so the differentiation between the male and the female mm. um maybe using color or something because every obviously they all just blend in into one here mm -hmm. but there's definitely some women in this list yeah and i don't know if there are details on I, I i don't recall what was in the data but it might be interesting the different industries yeah yeah no, you noted that yeah my my um my daughter was studying this uh george carver washington so that, that name rang a bell <laughs> cool it's cool um but yeah no it's great well done Okay, so the next one is by Simon Rowe, and this is Ivis Feedback looking at the Great Fire of London. <laughs> As I joked to Simon when he published this that my, my office in London, kind of, it, it overlooks, um, well, it's actually on this map, because it overlooks oh. the area where, it's, where, where it started, so sometimes we, so my office in, in London is around about here, and um, it's sited on the other side of the river. So we often go over there and buy lunch around like Pudding Lane where the, there's a big monument, which is at the station called Monument where the fire started. Yeah. I love this, um, the background that he designed. So I think I read in a tweet, he, he designed this himself, the, that the kind of the burnt paper look. Which oh, I wow. Really, really cool. Nicely done. I'm just yeah. so amazed at the creativity of everybody. Um, this is beautiful. Yeah. And again, I really like the font that he used. Um, yeah, I love this. It's really, um, it's the kind of font you see when you do look at these historic things on London. It's this exact font. I don't know what it is called, but it's something I recognize for sure. I love how he's, um, that he gives you get a sense of how the the uh the fire spread um because i'm familiar obviously with the area like this is quite a big area right um and it, i've never seen it presented this way before i thought that was really cool yeah i i think with the little fires on the bottom it's a timeline and it took me a while to realize that mm. so again maybe just very subtle like tagging the beginning and the end for the like of the timeline yeah agreed uh, i think that could... oh, it's yeah such a short period of time too yeah it spread really quickly uh, i guess i mean that does show what the second third and fourth uh, i still think it could be helpful is there inter interactivity on the map I don't think so. I don't think so, no. I think he designed it in Mapbox, yeah. Um, but no, there's no interactivity. I guess, what, what would you expect? I guess it really kind of self-explanatory, right? 
Yeah, no, that's true. I don't know if there would be any tooltips or high, or context that might be interesting to include. Mm. Um, with, I guess. Like, with the, hmm? Yeah, I was going to say. I guess if the, if it was for Ironvis again, we probably need some more data, maybe more analysis, maybe looking at some of these stats, um, and kind of showing that over time would be quite interesting. Because mm -hmm. you went from a hundred houses an hour here to. 13,000 by the next day. Yeah, I definitely think it tells the story well. But the deeper analysis is. Mm -hmm. Maybe really. the aftermath as well. Mm. Because this stops at, <laughs> by the time this fire had spread. But obviously there's a, a story um, of what happened afterwards. Yeah, what was the impact of it? I mean, other than obviously 13,000 houses being destroyed. Yeah, I mean, what happened to the people? I imagine you could, there must have been a lot of people homeless as mm. a result. Does it get into what caused it to start? Yeah, it's um, it was a bakery, wasn't it? Yeah, it's, uh. it's Pudding Lane. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> aptly named. A um, small fire. It's this is great because it's something that children in the UK at least learn about at school. I, my, I remember my daughter learned this. Is one of the first things she covered in primary school was she came home telling me about Pudding Lane and um, what had happened there. Um, I remember once I, I took a picture of the big monument that marks where it started, and I showed it like the, later that day. I was like, "Oh, look where I was today." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Would there be any value in seeing sort of larger context where in London this is? And I don't know, being not from yeah. the UK. I don't yeah, definitely. Because I mean, I know this is like central London, right? But if you didn't know London, you, you might not know that. Mm -hmm. Is there any context to the neighborhood as well? Or Yeah. Yeah, perhaps yeah. another section, if, if we were to, again, if I am this, maybe another section to kind of present London in a shaded area to, to the zones in on this, mm. this, the, this square here might be good. Yeah, but beautifully done. Yeah, no, I, I really like this. Okay, so the next one is by Soha, and this mm. is looking at the US gun epidemic. Uh, something I'm very passionate about. I'm a big fan of Soha's visits. It's always so mm -hmm. beautiful. And she picks these great topics as well. Just waiting for it to load up. Yeah, the one thing I will note is it's a little hard for me to read. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love it. But the contrast and the small text size just makes it very difficult. Yeah. Oh. Come on, it's so slow. Okay. I love, Soha's great at storytelling. Um, mm. I, I love how... Well, just one thing that stands out already is that the different chapters and how we have these icons that denote which chapter you're reading. Mm -hmm. And I love, I mean, she just does a really nice job with the white space and the spacing of the elements. Yeah. So that as you scroll through, they fit neatly. Um, so you can see it like within the context that she, that part of the story. Mm. And she's just put so much detail in this. I love the um, line chart. The step to, oh wow I this so, so much this is beautiful the um this chart at the bottom is really powerful right uh, the age distribution is interesting you just get that sense of scale of like the number of like young people died. the td dots that sort of fade into the background 
yeah. that, that they're younger or just they um the colors up here so they're so the the purple uh, ones are black and then the gray ones are everybody else got it that makes sense so you get a sense of scale of the proportion of um, black people mm -hmm. so you get the aggregate in the bar chart above and mm -hmm. then the individual lives yeah so it's like a marginal histogram isn't it mm -hmm. that is very powerful it's not just young people either it's um you've got you've, you've got trips like young children and you've got much older people mm. you got someone here that was 100 yeah so, and she's got the details of everybody as well yeah it's amazing it's it's i like this view because um and, and, and so hard's great at doing this but like really humanizing the, the data because it's, it's easy to look at the a bar and not get a sense of the number of people behind that that aggregated number right but when you see it like this it's like whoa okay that's a lot of people when you have a dot for each individual person and just this scrolling and scrolling and scrolling till you get to the bottom i think is really powerful yeah no i really like how she builds that and really then leading up to like each individual live yeah life. I like this chart as well, which is the, the map, which is showing them the trends by state. Mm -hmm. That's really nicely done. So I'm finding the title a little incongruous with actually the story. Which which title? The one at the the gun, the the, gun epidemic. At the top. Yeah. Or well. I feel like it's sort of maybe it transitions to a different story. Okay. I guess this because you mean because of the focus on the police. Or uh, I mean, I feel, I feel like that's the police and um, Black Lives Matter. I, I feel like that's the story that she's getting to, but I don't know that that is, it, I think it's there a little bit more in the subtitle. And maybe I would prioritize the look at police brutality and racial injustice as opposed to mm. the gonna, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it, Yeah, I guess that the this focus is more on. So we do start off by talking about the the gun homicide rate, but then it kind of trans it's kind of pivots, and then looks more at. Um, I, I feel like she's like, burying her lead. Um, like it, I think a bolder statement, like it, it sort of feels like it's not. Um, highlighted enough at the top i guess yeah yeah i guess all, everything's totally valid i guess maybe just a slightly different title and yeah it would work fine i like this um step line chart with the yeah. annotations i think that's my favorite element i like every section of this oh i um, like it all <laughs> yeah and that the mary mecco mm -hmm. yeah and really love the simplicity of the colors yeah Yeah, I like I like it all. I could spend a lot of time looking at this. I, I, I like how she split the sections off with these um purple bars, which she's actually rather than just leaving them there, she's actually putting some additional kind of information in each one. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I mean this is what I would say is an iron fizz like yeah. style fizz. I, I Personally, I don't think as much I'd really change. Um, I agree. Yeah. Excellent job.
Beautiful work. Okay, so the last one is by Zainab, and this is looking at Beychella. So it's when Beyonce played uh, Coachella, famously. Yes. I don't know if you've seen the um, documentary on this. It's amazing. Like, um, if you haven't, it's on Netflix. Okay, cool. So they no, basically not... recorded the whole thing, um, and it's overlaid with um, kind of like the making of the how how they how they rehearsed and things like that. It's really interesting. Cool. We'll have to watch it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. And I love, I love the title. I love the photos. Yeah. I love the way she's aligned the text the photos. It's just like, when I saw this first, I was like, wow, this is, I want to do a biz like this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it made me smile as soon as it popped up. Yeah. And I mean, Beyonce's performance at Coachella was really uh, iconic um, it included so many different um, references to different things. Um, it's it's really really powerful. If you get a chance to watch it, I'd recommend it. Thank you. Cool. I like how she looks at the HBCUs as well, and kind of pivots away and then starts looking at that because it is relevant to. The, 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 the style um, of her performance and how she had the marching bands and, and things like that. Mm. Do you think she should spell out HBCU in that in the title? As somebody who gets called out on her acronyms all the time, I, I do like that she spells it out in the text. Um, yeah, um, I think if she's yeah maybe I guess because it's spelled out here, I guess it's explained. I. I didn't know what an HBCU was until a few years back. It was actually Chantilly um, that taught me what an HBCU was because uh, she was working a lot with HBCUs for MAD. Um, and I had to look up what's an HBCU. I really like the quote. Yeah. Uh, what, um, what I really love as well is this this like, kind of grid here, which looks at the notable black people paid homage to in Beychella. Um, and it's a real mix of different people, different like black people from history. So we've got Fela Kuti, he's a famous Nigerian um, artist, that performer. That's really cool. Even like W.E.B. Du Bois. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you can click through and get more information about them as well. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the this is what I'm referring to. So Homecoming is the uh, the film. Very cool. Um, I like the way she did the awards with the stars and coloring. Again, nice simple colors. Um, yeah, I love this. Yeah. I I think I would align the labels and the headliners to the left instead of the little things so, so that they up, up further with the headliners um just aligning the labels to the left so that they line up with the dots on the Sorry, ratings no, no further up at the top okay right yeah there. yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah i get what you mean yeah um, I'd make the text here is 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 really small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I keep complaining for your, for your old eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be such a broken record here. <laughs> oh. Um, I might make that make this whole like section a little bit longer and allow room for some more text. Yeah, especially like since it fits easily on the page, you could just increase it a little bit without too much trouble. Yeah. What's interesting is, is that the way that she's colored it uh, really highlights the lack of female headliners, mm -hmm. right? So you've got Bjork, who did it twice, and then Lady Gaga, Beyonce, and Ariana Grande, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah. That is really sad. Um, another thing down at the ratings and if there isn't going to be or if there aren't going to be tooltips or interactivity um maybe just putting a blank box over it so that you can't click on things and uh, now i'm further down <laughs> under the ratings <laughs> sorry i'm skipping around a lot <laughs> right okay yeah on the ratings um yeah I, I would cover this just with a blank but it looks like 
Oh no, it's not. I, I thought initially it was kind of something was cut off, but it's it's, it's the design. And I think maybe put the um, change the order of um, so it looks like the bar is in front of the dots. Just switch the order of those so that the dot is on top. Yeah, yeah. Like it's really subtle. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought because we've got a, a, the reason I thought there was something Tableau was doing something here was because you've got the it's all lowercase right apart from imdb so the r of rotten tomatoes is lowercase r and i for some reason thought it was cut, clipping off like a word um i might just make that inconsistent with everything else with that the, like the camel case yeah oh the hbcu's advanced screen is getting cut off in the chart above yeah it's always frustrating when something looks perfect on your screen and then you publish it to public and it looks completely different. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say as well is it it's different depending on what machine you look at because I had a viz that looked fine on my machine and I looked at it on someone else's and was like oh my gosh like I didn't realize it looked this bad um, on it looks fine on my laptop uh, um, yeah. Oh, yeah this looks so much sharper on yours than it does on my systems. Strange so. yeah um, what about aligning the the right aligning the text here we yeah. said that about a couple of other visits as well haven't we i think so yeah i like how at the top here you can actually click through and learn more about the different artists i thought that was quite cool yeah that's really nice now do you how like how she's taken this opportunity to yet yeah, we're talking about Beyonce's performance at Coachella, but also yeah, highlighting different um, people that that Beyonce highlighted, and also the HS HBCUs and where they are, um, and famous people that have graduated from them, which I thought was a really nice touch. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> so it does touch on so many different things, which I thought was really. We spend a lot of time with this biz and learn a lot. Yeah, no, really nice storytelling, nice yeah. analysis. Do you feel like? Yeah, it fits in the criteria well. Yeah, I mean it's a historic event, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's recent history, but I mean Kevin Flerlidge did 2020, so um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like it's in the past. Therefore, it's history, and I think this this performance was really iconic. Um, so yeah, no, totally. It, it was gosh. groundbreaking yeah but that's the last one um uh, well done, we look everyone. at yours quickly michelle sure. yeah. <laughs> Since you're here. i'll let you talk for it quickly i did love this Liz. oh thank you so as i was looking through the data something that really struck me and it took me a while to figure out how I wanted to say this, but the discrepancy between oh, yeah. men and women's achievements, you know, and the fact that black women just don't necessarily have the opportunity. Like if there aren't, if there isn't access to sports in where you're growing up or you don't have the money to buy a tennis racket or you don't have the time, like there are so many barriers to entry that they can't even get on the starting line. Um, mm. So um, I, I guess I really wanted to highlight the that the discrepancy between the two. Um, and I love the candlestick chart. Um, I think I first saw Andy Creeble do one of those for a makeover Monday. And um, I just felt like that did a good job showing this. Um, and then the bar chart highlighting again, the difference. So sort of trying to start at the top and drill down into each. And then at the bottom, you can hover over the dots and see each of the individuals. Yeah, I love this um, this bar chart here, where you, and the way you've included that kind of call out. I thought that was was really nice. And I love the candlestick chart as well, as you say. Um, a big fan of those. I've never I've never actually done one. I need to do one, um, but I do love it. Um, but you're right. There's so many barriers. Um, I mean, there's, there's barriers for people anyway, but bar particularly for women, especially when maybe they're expected to look after like family members or or things like that more so than 
the men who might be encouraged to go and pursue these things or not even getting credit for the work that they've done you no. know how many years did it take for the women who were part of the space program to get the recognized? Hid, the, the hidden, hidden figures program. ladies yeah yeah i mean i know plenty of black women who have had their work you know passed off by men yeah yeah and, and it's something that i think all women face but i suspect it is particularly egregious yeah i mean look at the sports 78 percent Mm-hmm. Well, that's the other thing, too. I mean, schools invest in men's sports more than women's sports. So, again, you're already at mm-hmm. a disadvantage. Yeah, it's the same over here. You know, um, so much more money dedicated to, to like, if you talk about football, soccer, mm-hmm. um, there's so much more money in, in men's football than there is in women's. And even when you are at the top of your game, you know, women's football, they're being paid less than men. Yeah, so. yeah. Agreed. No, I, I love this. I love the, the, the colors that you picked um, and how you did the consistent use of color throughout. Thank you. You know where I got those? Uh, there where? was an inauguration palette for uh, the U.S. inauguration. Okay. Oh, because it's like Kamala Harris's jacket was the, the yes. purple, right? Yeah. Um, but I think these might be my new gender colors because I really like them. Yeah, I love they work really well together. Um, I actually, I have a, I have a top that's those two colors um nice. so, yeah it's in your picture it's not that it's, one that, no oh, okay. it, that's the same yellow though you're right yeah <laughs> um but, you know i love it it's great so thank you for entering and this was for diversity and data <laughs> iron quest and is there one more i i don't know if it really qualifies for edu- the for to educate, this educate. <laughs> i think it does because it's it's the same data set that um the SECO used, right? So looking at um, achievements over time. Yeah, no, it's great. Thank you. Oh, oh, thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate you coming on to join me today as a surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we'll have, to, we'll have to co-host one together soon. I've got books on my list to do at some point, yes. and I think you'll be the perfect person for that. And I, I wanted, I also, I've almost, almost finished my first book in ages. Like, um, I'm going to finish it later today. So I'm really excited about that. What are you reading? Um, I told you this before. It's just a, it's just a, a, a fiction book about um, a kind of a mystery um, oh, thriller right. kind of I'm thing. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I'll share a tweet about the book when I finished um, and cool. give my, like, recommendation or not, seeing how it ends. Um but yeah, no, it's it's good. But yeah, definitely books is one that, that comes up all the time. I know a lot of people have been asking um, for me to run a book round, so I will. It's on my list. Um, we're flying through them this year because normally I'd, last year I was like taking a bit of a break between each one, but this year so far we've gone consistently from uh, each month there's a new round. And, and with no kind of iron, iron biz announcement yet, um, I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> so, um, Good. They're yeah. so much fun. I mean, I'm so excited about the games. I'm going to make the whole yeah. family get involved. Yeah. So talking of games, let me just bring up that really quickly. Um, so, yeah, as you mentioned, um, this is now underway. Uh, the current uh, Iron Quest round is, is on games. So this is any type of games. So it could be sports games, board games, video games you name it, uh, you could maybe even create a game uh, to play in, in Tableau. Um, if you check out my blog post, which I'll post with this video um, and the link, so you can have a look at that. If you have a look at that, there's some suggestions on what you could do. Um, I'm really excited to be hosting this one with Kevin Flerledge. Uh Kevin is kind of like, when I think of games in Tableau, I think of Kevin. So I'm, I'm really honored to be hosting this one with him. And he actually has, a, well, he's built a number of games in, in Tableau for one, but he has a viz which links through to games other people have built as well. So um, it's literally like a one-stop shop. So um, there's tons of inspiration um, from just looking at Kevin's profile alone. But if you ever look at my blog post, I've put together some other visits as well, um, or included other visits as well, that some previous Iron Quest entries, which were game related. So maybe people looking at data on games. So looking at maybe the history of Super Mario, for instance, and or maybe their own game data. So like quantified self style like how they're how, tracking how many games they played I actually included the viz of yours Michelle so the uh, oh, cool. magic the gathering is that correct mm-hmm. yeah so that yeah, when you, you built the, uh, the the triangle what you call it uh, scatter plot um, Turn, 
Ternary. Ternary chart, yeah. When looking at the, that, that is, it, is it a card game? Yes. Yeah. My children play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I thought that was perfect to include here. Um, so I wanted a real mix. So that one's actually my blog post. But yeah, so this one is running until um, March the 11th. And Does that mean my work is already done? <laughs> well, technically, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> you can put your feet up and sit this one out. Uh, no, no. Yeah, no, but thank you for joining me again, Michelle. And thank you to everyone that entered. Um, and yeah, we look forward to seeing what everyone comes up with next month. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you.